Here, let me, let me fan this keyboard off just a little bit. Woo. Folks, I want to tell you, you got to be glad you're here today. Amen? It, it, yeah, amen. If, if, you, if, you're, if you're here and you're not happy you're here, you're tuning in and you're wishing you could do something else, wow. Man, that's some good stuff. Amen? Give that choir a hand again. Great job. There for a minute, I thought I was going to have to walk outside and see that we still have a Baptist sign name on our church, amen? Wow. And if you're here today and you say, man, I'd love to have been a part of that, you can, 4 o'clock today, amen? You can come back and be a part of that with them and practice. So, uh, boy, it's good to be in the house of the Lord, amen? Man, oh man. Today we're going to continue on with the idea of uh, connecting to serve in 2021. That's the theme of our, of, our, of our year, and that's the theme of my series of my messages is connecting to serve. And today we're going to be looking again at the, the idea of the most important connection that we have with God, it, it, or that we have in all of this is God, that we can be connected to Him. Our connection to Him, if, as we look and we see on this chart, that we're connecting to serve God, the church, and people. But if we're looking and, and we see the most important aspect is our connection to God, that parallel line from us to God, because it is that connection that will connect everything else. It is that connect, connection that literally changes our lives, as we just heard and, and enjoyed just a few moments ago. That when I am connected to God the way God desires me to be connected, then he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then everything else, those other connections, man, they'll be much easier to do. So connecting to God is what we're going to be looking at today. The title of my message uh, this morning is, is Connecting to God, and it's Total Surrender. Now, you, you notice in my title, there is a question mark. That question mark is there for a reason. Because that's the, usually the response most of us give when we talk about surrendering our lives to God. Instead of going total surrender, most of the time it's total surrender, all of it, everything, I got to give everything over. And so we leave that question because it, it's very difficult to understand the idea of totally surrendering our lives over to God. So when we're talking about that connection, that is what God wants. He wants our surrendering to him. He says, I do not want your burnt offerings or your sacrifices. I don't want your stuff. I don't want what you can do. I don't, I don't want your other connections. He says, the first thing I do is I want you. I want to be connected to you. And so this idea is total surrender. Now, we keep the idea there because most people don't even realize that we haven't totally surrendered. Now, we've surrendered, but we haven't totally. Because a lot of us will have to ask this question. If I surrender, then what? What's going to happen to me? What's going to change in my life if I totally surrender? What is going on here now? And that's the question that Satan wants the church to really ponder on. Amen? You say, well, would Satan wants the church to ponder on a question? Absolutely, because he wants us to be asking, if I surrender totally to God, then what's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to my life? And so as long as we're asking that question, then we're going to have a hard time realizing that maybe we haven't even surrendered everything over to God. Now, it's in your bulletin, but it wasn't on the screen. And Randy called me the, uh, yesterday and said, hey, what, what's the text message or what's the message on your, uh, uh, the scripture for your message? I said, oh, I forgot to put it on there, didn't I? Well, it's in your bulletin, but it's in Luke chapter 1. So take your Bibles and turn to Luke chapter 1. Today I'm going to read just one verse of scripture, and it's an important verse. As a matter of fact, I, I've shared some thoughts on this before, and what I believe, and I want to tell you today, is I believe that for a Christian, this is the, the most terrifying scripture that we can think of. Now, all of you know the, the idea of Mary and who she was, the mother of Jesus, and that she was visited by an angel and told of all the things that were going to go take place in her life. 
Now, what Mary was told there that night would have probably scared all of us half to death. But I want to focus in on the idea of total surrender and listen to Mary's response to the news that was given to her. Luke chapter 1, verse 38, listen to this. Then Mary said, as a result of everything that had been told to her, of her, told to her about what was going to take place, Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord. Listen. Let it be to me according to your word. In other words, I will totally surrender my life that God, no matter what takes place, I surrender to you. Totally surrendering. Totally. Not leaving there, not asking that question, if I do, God, if, 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 I, if I surrender, if I do what you told me if I allow if if all this is going to take place in my life what then she didn't ask that question she just said Lord whatever you do whatever you say I'm going to do it now that's scary folks because again many of us would like to go back and go well okay now wait a minute explain to me what's going to happen when I do this how's this all going to work out and, and what's my benefit on it Mary didn't ask that she just said let it be to me as you, as you desire. Now, the thing we need to understand, Mary was willing to surrender totally over to God what his will was. Now, some people, when we go here, and, and, I, and I mention this text, some people will say, well, yeah, but wait a minute. That was easy. That was Mary. We all know Mary, and we know who she is and what she did, and we all know about Mary. As a matter of fact, there's Groups of people who have taken Mary and elevated her up to almost Jesus. And when you do that, then of course, if that's true, then we can say, well, maybe that was easier for Mary because again, she was Mary, mother of God. But can I help? Can I, can I mention this to you? That Mary was not elevated into that level. Mary, if you will, was just a person in her life was going to change. We, we don't picture this, but in most of, the, most of the paintings or the artwork that we see of, of, of the, the nativity or Mary and the baby Jesus, we see a woman probably in her mid-20s, mid to late 20s, and we see a man who's probably about the same age, and they're there, and they're, it's all nice and gone, these uh, mature adults who've gone through life. But in reality, I want you to understand, Mary's life was about to change because Mary wasn't in her mid to late 20s. According to Jewish custom, where Mary was in her life, she was about 12 to 15 years old. This was a little girl, folks, that had just been told, you're about to become a mother. And not only that, you're going to be the mother of the Savior of the world. Her life was about to change because she was 12 to 15 years old. And, and you've got to understand... Mary had dreams because in all the, the, the rules of the Jewish customs that a girl between the age of 12 and 15 was going to be betrothed to a husband that, that, that a lot of the times the family picked. Now, we as dads would call those the good old days. Amen? When we, our daughters would do what we wanted them to do, when we wanted to do it, how they wanted to do it, to whom they did it to. So Mary was, had a dream. Mary had dreams. She was already established that she was going to marry Joseph, that she was probably going to settle down and be a wife and have, have, have a bunch of babies and be a wonderful mom and have dreams of, of her husband, supporting her husband. She's going to be the wife of a, a, of a carpenter, and, and they were going to go through life and just have a wonderful life. Well, you got to understand when Mary heard this news, all of her dreams were about to change. Everything that she had hoped for, a, a fabulous wedding that would last a week, that, was going to be, that wasn't going to happen now. All these other things that she had dreamt of, they weren't going to be there. They weren't going to be accessible to her. So, but yet she still said, here is your servant. Whatever you desire for me to do, I will do. And her future was now in question. The future that she had planned, what she had hoped for, all of these things were going to be there. Because you've got to understand, my friends, she had to question because she didn't know how things were going to go from that point on. She didn't even know how Joseph was going to respond. 
How is he going to respond to the news? How are people going to respond to the news? Because we know that even in the scripture, the Bible tells us that when Joseph first heard it, it says that he contemplated two choices. Because he had every right. Because now this, this woman that was, or little girl that was supposed to be his wife, she comes to him and says, look, I'm, 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 I'm going to have a baby. So he could have, and she had no idea what he was going to do. That he could have publicly brought her out in front of everybody and declared her to be unfit to be a wife, and I want nothing to do with her, and I will divorce her, and we, we can do whatever you as a group of people decide to do to her. Or it said that he could even, he contemplated, well, let's just put her away privately. I will, I will move her on. Well, I'm not going to humiliate her anymore, but I'm not going to have anything to do with her. Folks, listen, we, we know the rest of the story, amen? We know that Joseph was visited by an angel, and the angel told him, hey, so everything she's telling you is true. You need to take care of her. Well, we didn't know, she didn't know that. We know that because we've got, the, we've got the rest of the story. She doesn't have the rest of the story. She hadn't lived it yet. And so here she is wondering, how is my life going to change? Everything that I wanted, my future is, no, is now in question. And then also her reputation was ruined. Her reputation was ruined. Because I want you to understand, uh, somebody once said Mary was the only person who knew for absolutely sure that it happened the way she said it did. Everybody else had to do it by faith. Everybody else had to believe just what she said through the, through the Spirit of God speaking to them. But Mary was the only one that absolutely knew she had never been with a man. And so her reputation, she was going to have to walk around her family, her friends, and be this basically an unwed mother and not knowing what in the world was going to happen. Because you've got to realize this, the Immaculate Conception had never happened before. And guess what? It's never happened since. So this was a one time in the history of the world thing. And Mary was going to have to live with that, with all the uncertainty. Being again, a 12 to 15 year old girl who had dreams that were gone. Who had family that could have easily left her, friends that would mock her and laugh at her, that shun her. But still yet, through all of this, she said, let it be to me, done to me, as you see. So my question is, if she couldn't trust her circumstances, she couldn't trust Joseph at that very first, she couldn't trust her family, she couldn't trust all of his friends, what would make her say that? Because my friend, she had something very amazing. She trusted God. Amen. She trusted God. We don't know what's going to happen when we totally surrender over to God. So we may not be able to trust the situation coming to work to, our, to make me happy. We may not be able to trust the people around. But my friends, can I tell you this? You here and you at home, can I tell you this? That you can absolutely trust God. We just sang a song a while ago that said his promises are yes and amen. Do you know what that means? That whatever he says will be fulfilled. If he promises us he'll never leave us nor forsake us, that no matter what we do, if we'll totally surrender our lives over to him, he will take care of us. Yes and amen. So we may not be able to trust a whole lot of stuff, but the one thing that I want to declare to you today, my friends, we all here today and you watching, you can trust God and his word. So when he says, I want you to surrender, I want you to connect with me through total surrender, you can trust him. But I want us to understand something here. Total surrender is difficult. Amen? It's It's difficult. No matter who we are, no matter what we're doing, total surrender is difficult. Why? Due to some false beliefs, if you will. We kind of have this idea in our mind that I, I, I've got to be careful when I say those words, I will totally surrender. Because Satan has a lie. Satan's lie is that surrender will threaten our ability to enjoy life and be happy. And so every single time we hear 
I, surrender, I want to surrender, God calls us to surrender, Satan comes behind us and says, oh, but wait a minute. Don't you realize that when you surrender totally to him, that's threatening your ability to, to enjoy life. You can't enjoy life surrendered over to God. Surely not. You can't enjoy life and, and, and be happy when you surrender over to God. Surely not. And so we have this false teaching that every time God wants total surrender, we, as the church, if we're not careful, we begin to doubt that God can make us happy. God will guide us into good things. And so we have this false teaching that we listen to Satan. We listen to Satan and what he wants to tell us in all these ways. Many ask the question, doesn't God want me to be happy? Man, I hear that all the time. I hear people all the time. And, and most of the time that I have found out when people ask me that is when they're having the decision to do right and wrong. When, they, when they're laid out there in their decision as they know what they're about to do might not be God's will, but then they want to throw out this question, but doesn't God want me to be happy? Do you know what my response to them is on that? No. God's desire is not for you to be happy. God's desire is for you to be at peace with him. God's desire is for you to be obedient to him. And guess what will then come about because of that? Then happiness will come. Not in the sense that the world gives happiness, just same as the, with peace. But I hear all the time, doesn't God want me to be happy? So I can't totally surrender because I have in my mind that if God tells me to surrender, then what that means is he may send me to some place that I don't want to be. And that's the first thought we have, is it not? I mean, he may ask me to do something I don't want to do. So what, what do we do? We listen in and we buy into a lie and the idea is that Satan wants to tell us that what God has for us is not good. When the truth is, listen to this, the truth is found in Jeremiah 29, 11, when he says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Now listen, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you what? A future and hope. Now, that doesn't sound to me like something we've got to be fearful of. He says, I know the thoughts I have towards you, everything that I do for you. If I ask you to surrender, I have a plan, and that plan has nothing to do with evil. That plan doesn't have anything to do with bad. That plan has something to give you a future and give you hope. That's where he says that my friend, is the truth. But somehow we, we as the church have to get this out of our mind that, that if I do, then I won't ever be happy. And if I, if I surrender, then my life is ruined. Because the thing that we have to understand is surrendering to God does not mean weakness. Surrendering to God means power. Surrendering to God doesn't mean sorrow. But man, when we surrender over to God totally, man, that brings joy. Because we're connected to him. When we surrender over to God, it doesn't mean uncertainty. I mean, it brings a confidence to our lives because guess what? We know that we are trusting a being that has good thoughts toward us and was planning a future and hope for us. That's confidence. Doesn't mean that we are in bondage, but it means that we're set free. When I trust God completely, he doesn't bind me up, he frees me up. When I trust God doesn't mean death, it means life. When I surrender everything over to him, he doesn't bring death to me. Listen to me, it's, turning away from God brings death. It brings death physically, it brings death spiritually, it brings death to, to relationships, it brings death to a church. Turning away from God doesn't bring life, it brings death. Because I hear the world say, we just want to live. Then turn to Christ because that's when joy comes. That's when life is really beginning for you. So there's no death, but there's life. So we've got to, as the church, more than anything, as those who have declared him in our lives, folks, we've got to get out of this false sense of what surrender really means. We've got to get away from that. 
And what we have to then the reason that, that, we, that we do is because we like to reserve the right to choose for ourselves. I want to surrender. I don't mind surrender, but not all of it because I like to be able to come over here and say, well, you know what? Today, I, I, I want to choose this. And if I totally surrender, that means I have no more options. I kind of like to keep my options open. And that's where, unfortunately, a lot of people are. I get that way myself. Is that I say, well, I would surrender most everything, but every now and then I still like to have an option. Guess what? That's not total surrender. That's not what Mary said. Mary didn't say, well, I'll do this, but, you know, I still want to reserve the right to do something else. When I get farther down the road and some of this begins to go south, I want, I want to be able to do what I think is best. And so this is what Satan tries to get us to, to understand is we want the right to choose for ourselves. Now, the word we use is negotiate. How many of you have ever tried to negotiate with God? How many of you are lying right now? Because there wasn't anybody in here raised your hand. I'd have rather told that truth than the lie. Well, yeah, I lied. <laughs> Amen? Folks, I spent three years of my life negotiating with God. When God was wanting to call me out of teaching and coaching full-time and bring me into the full-time pastoral ministry, wow, I bought into a lie. And I, I, I thought, well, God, if I quit coaching and teaching, my life is over. I don't get to have any fun because this, is, this was not what I wanted to be doing at my age when I was first starting out. Pastoring a church, folks, was not, some people say it was last on my list. Folks, this wasn't even on my list. Amen? So when God came along, and after several, it was about 17 years of coaching and teaching and doing stuff that I loved, he said, Harold, it's time to switch over. It's time to go into full-time ministry. Man, I began to negotiate with God. Because I didn't want my life to be over. I wanted to keep my options open. Well, can I keep my certificate? Because if I keep my certificate and this preaching thing doesn't go like I think it should, that it might, then I can always fall back on to teaching and coaching because I know this. And I went to God and I said, God, you know, I've been pretty successful doing this. I kind of know what I'm doing and you're going to ask me to do something I have no idea what I'm about. So I began to negotiate, but what negotiation is that we got to understand is to reach an agreement or compromise. This is why we want to negotiate with God, because we want to keep our options open so that I can say, well, God, let's, uh, let's go back and forth here just a little bit. Instead of total surrender, why don't you let me, and I began to tell God all the good things I accomplished while I was coaching and teaching, all the good things I could continue to accomplish when I was teaching and coaching. God, don't you know the young people that I would have influence on in their lives? God, don't you know the, the people that were in my youth group? God, don't you know, and don't you know, don't you know? God, if you'll just let me, okay, I, I, will, I will go a little bit more into that and a little less into this, but just let me have this option. For three years, my friends, I battled God because I knew what he wanted to do. And I've shared with many of you before that I remember the day standing in my little trailer. My wife and daughters and I lived in a little trailer. And I was standing at the, at the stove. And my wife was standing there by the sink, which was about like, because we're in a trailer. It's about like right here. We were as close as you could be. And I remember her finally saying this. She looked at me and said, Harold, why don't you just do what God wants you to do? Because I was, I was miserable. I was making my wife miserable, my daughters. And what I thought I was doing such a great job teaching and coaching, I realized that maybe I was not doing it because I was struggling. And finally my wife said, Harold, why don't you just do what God wants you to do? Surrender. Surrender. And so at that point in time, I did. I began to quit negotiating with God, but this is kind of what we, we like to do. Because we, we, we are so worried about what we're going to miss. 
Folks, this isn't just to us. I remember, if you'll remember in the scripture, when Jesus, after he had, he had followed, followed in baptism, and, and man, you, you remember uh, the, the, the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove, and, and, and he heard, and everybody heard, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Man, that was a fantastic moment. But you'll remember right after that, the Bible says that Jesus was led into the wilderness for 40 days of, of fasting and temptation. And you remember one of the temptations you remember what Satan did? He took him on the mountain. He said, hey, look out there. You see all that world? Okay, it's all right to be doing what you're doing, but you see what you're going to miss? As a matter of fact, he even told him, he said, if you will just not do what God wants, all of that can be yours. See what you're going to miss? When you actually do this thing, folks, then he comes to us and maybe here today and, and, and I want to tell you, you are, I didn't want to tell you early. I made that mistake in the first service. Second service, I didn't want to tell you so early, but I'm going to tell you right now. We're getting ready. Do you and you know that are tuning in, do you know you're in a very dangerous spot right now? Because here in the next few minutes, you're going to have to make a decision. I bet some people went, ah, turn that channel. <laughs> but here's what's going to happen. This idea of total surrender, that's, that, that is absolute true. We, we have to do that. To stay truly connected to God like he wants us to be. But Satan is now going to begin to tell you, hey, look out there. Look at your life. Look at all the stuff in the world. And do you realize that if you totally surrender, you'll get none of that? But he says, I'll tell you what, though. If you'll not totally surrender today, I'll give you that. I'll give you the stuff of the world. I'll, I'll, I'll give you all that. But, oh, he's not going to tell you what you're going to miss. Because this total surrender is the idea of, of giving ourselves over to God. And so often, we, we want to keep our compromises open. And what, we're, what we basically say is we say, God, I'm willing to do what you want me to do as long as I want to do what you're wanting me to do. Right? God, I'm willing to go where you want me to go as long as where you want me to go is where I want to go. But the minute you ask me to do what I don't want to do or go where I don't want to go, God, that's when I want to keep my, my, my options open. Again, we go back to that negotiating. And we, say, and we say that because we're believing Satan when he says, look out there. See, that place, that'd be a good place for you to go. You'd like that one, right? But all, and he says, if you do, if you'll, not say, if you'll say no to God, you can go to that place. You know, you know that stuff you want? Well, you know, if you, don't, if you say no to God, you can probably get what you want. And that's what we do a lot of times. God, I surrender all as long as what I surrender is what I want. I surrender to go as long as where you want, wherever I go is where I had planned on going. I will do whatever it is that whatever you want me to do is what I wanted to do in the first place. That's not what Mary said. She said, behold your servant. Behold your servant. Let it be to me according to your word. Whatever you want, wherever you want, however you want it to go, then let it be me. I'll do it. Because the thing that we've got to understand is this right here. I found this quote, and I always like giving credit for quotes. Well, I couldn't find out who actually did this, but I'm going to tell you, that's not mine, so I'm off the hook. I'm not plagiarizing because I'm sat flat telling you, I didn't make this up, all right? I found this. But when we begin to talk about life and we begin to talk about goodness and balance in our lives, this quote was said this, balance in our lives comes from when we stop striving to control and we start desiring to surrender. Because as long as I'm wanting to control, my life is uncertain, folks. Amen? Your life, can I tell you, you here and you at home, your lives are uncertain. We have no certainty. But I want to control it. 
then I have no balance. But the minute I surrender over and I say, God, I give it to you. That's where balance comes in because he says, the things I want of you, they're good for you. The places I want you to go, they're the right places to be. All that I have is, according to my plan, and I think of good thoughts towards you that give you a future and I'll give you hope. Now, my question is, as I close out, what out there, or what even in here, could be worth losing what he has for us? And he says, you want healing? Come to me, I will give you healing. You want strength and encouragement? Come, I'll give you that. You want, you want wisdom? Come, I'll give you that. But it comes when you surrender. And all of a sudden Satan comes, yeah, but what about? Oh, could you imagine today what it would be like if one person in this room or one person watching this live stream, just one, would say, God, I surrender everything to you. Let it be done to me, whatever your word says. Can you imagine what God could do with that? Hey, let's go a little bit bigger here as I wrap this up. What would it be like if, if this church... This church, everyone in this church, all of you watching, if everyone in this church could say, God, here we all are, surrendering ourselves over to you, let it be done to us what you desire, whatever your word says, here I am, here we are. Can you imagine what we could do in Lawton? Can you imagine what we could do in the world? If we could... By this nonsense of Satan and the lies that he's telling us. And man, if we could ball it all up and, and we could cast it out of here and it'd just be us and God and him speaking to us and us trusting him and he leads us on what to do and we could all just stand in just a moment and say, yes, God, whatever you want, here are your servants, let it be done to us as you please. And God, use us. Man, can you imagine the difference could happen? But it's got to be us saying, Lord, here I am. And it starts, if any of you are here today or you're watching and you've never given your life to Christ, it starts right there. And Satan's still going to tell you, but look, what you're going to lose, I will offer you all of this. But he's not going to tell you what you'll lose. But it begins, if you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Savior, I want to encourage you to call on his name and be saved today. Connect to him in that way. Christian, Christian out there, Christian here, church, what could it be if we could just say, God, use us. Here we are. Totally surrendered. And not asking, if I surrender, then what? We already know what. A future and a hope. That's what. Can we do it? Will you do it? I told you, you're going to have to make a decision today. Will you totally surrender to him? Say, God, whatever you want. Whatever you want. Wherever it is, I'll go with you. I'll do it for you. Totally surrendered. I'd like everybody to bow your head and Keith and, and the group are going to come up, and he's going to sing a song for us here in just a moment. And during this song, I'll be down front, and I want to pray with you. If you need to receive Christ as your Savior, would you come forward today? But listen, you don't need me. You can do it right there where you are. God is asking you to totally surrender your life over to him, that he can give you hope. He can give you a future. Would you surrender to him? Would you call upon the name of the Lord and be saved? You at home, you can do that yourself. Would you just call on him today? But maybe you're here and you say, Pastor, I know I'm saved, but boy, I need, to, I need to totally surrender today. Maybe you're at home and you're saying the same thing. I need to totally surrender my will to his, wherever he wants. Would you do that today? I'll be here 
We're going to have an invitation time, man. I'm down front. If you need to come, would you come? But I want you to listen as Keith and them sing this powerful song for you. Father, hear our prayer today. Speak to those who need to be spoken to. And let us fully surrender to you. Whether we're in this room or whether we're watching on the live stream, let us surrender to you. And God, you take us. And let us see what what we can do through you. Take these next few moments and make them yours. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I remember how you told me That life may not be easy And everything that I need You've already given me I remember how you told me I can trust you completely Wow. I hope and pray that you are still happy that you came today and that you at home tuned in to us because God's amazing. Amen. The connection we have with him is the most vital connection we're ever going to have.
So I want to ask you today as we close, do you know him? Do you have him in your heart? And if you don't, then the invitation time is still open. It's just they're not going to be singing. I'll be here. If you're at home, you can call the church, and we'd love to visit with you. A couple things that I want to mention before we close out. Again, thank you all for coming. Um, as you know, that uh, we are now in the process of searching for a, a children's director for our children's ministry here at First Baptist West. And uh, so we're starting that process. So if you or anyone you know would be interested in that position, please call the office and we'll get the process started with you. But in the meantime, uh, Ara Silky has agreed to serve as our interim children's director. So give her a hand for that. She's sitting right back there. And uh, so she's agreed to that, so pray for her. And also, if she ask, comes up and asks you to help, you now know your answer, right? Totally surrender and say, yes. All right. So, Ara, there you go. I've set the stage for you. All right. But pray for Ara and, and Philip and the family as she takes this on until we get, to, until we get the person that God wants us to have back as our children's director. The other thing that we have is, um, as you see, this, the, the stage isn't completely finished yet. We have another step that we're going to be doing, not a step, but another process, uh, and that is to put the front on. Well, we have, Rusty has gotten all the wood panels to put on here, and he has cut them, and they've been, a bunch of them, have, most of them have been stained, but we're still needing to stain some more and also put a finish on them. Really, that's not, technical work but if you would like to help us please contact us here and anytime this week we'll let you we'll let you work on that if you say man I can stain strips of wood or I can put a finish on it I can do that and say well I only have about an hour well we'll take it amen and then next Saturday morning what our goal is is to have all that done so that we can finish put put them on the stage here okay so please help us out this week if you've got a little time you got a little work that you can do, any of those, just come up here and we'll, we'll let you do it, okay? So we'll have it all ready for you. You just tell us you're going to. But we could really use your help on that, okay? So please keep that in your mind. Also, there's so many other things in your bulletin. Take a look at those. If you're online uh, or if you're watching us on live stream, you can go online and our bulletin is there. So please uh, go and look and see what all is going on. So with that, we're going to be dismissed in just a moment, but I'm going to turn it over to Patrick. He's got another thing he wants to mention to you. And then when he prays, we'll be dismissed, and we'll start on the south side first. And so we'll dismiss here, and then we'll dismiss on the north side. Uh, tithes and offerings will go in the boxes in the back, okay? All right, thank you again for coming. Thank you at home for joining us. And Patrick, if you'll take over from here. Yeah, thank you.